problem-solving examples in free-falling objects. Note that in solving free-fall problems, we often neglect air resistance. These are the four kinematic equations that can be useful in solving free-fall problems. We'll assume that acceleration is constant, since the acceleration here is due to gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second squared. The symbols that we use have may here may vary. Y is the displacement. G is acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meter per second squared. T is time. V sub O is the initial velocity, and V is the final velocity. We have to be consistent in solving problems, and we have to be consistent in using variables though it may vary in some sources. Problem solving strategy first, identify known values, write it down and relate to the symbols. Second, identify the unknown, write it in symbol form. Third, find the kin kinematic equation. Fourth, substitute known values in the equation. And lastly, solve for unknown. So for unknown. First example. The boy drops a ball from a roof of the house, which takes three seconds to hit the ground. What are required in the problem? What are the given and what is required in the problem? The given we have three seconds, which is the time, and of course constant gravity 9.8 meter per second square and what is asking the problem is the velocity the velocity of the ball so what do you think among these free fall equations we're going to use <clears throat> of course the number one where there is v there's gravity and time Solution. Since our um, initial velocity is zero, it is zero because the boy just dropped the ball. The boy didn't throw the ball. The boy just dropped the ball. So there's no initial velocity. Our velocity here, our final velocity, is equal to negative 9.8 meter per second squared times three seconds the time three seconds it is negative because the motion is downwards so the velocity is negative 30 meter per second second example john throws a ball straight upward and after one second it reaches its maximum height then it does free fall motion, which takes two seconds. Calculate the maximum height and velocity of the ball before it crushes the ground. So first we have to analyze the problem, find the given in the problem, and what are the required. For letter A, we have the velocity of the ball at time is equal to one second. Second. The velocity of the ball at time is equal to 2 seconds and the maximum height. Which of the following free fall equations this thing we're going to use? For letter A, we have velocity and time. Of course, number 1. The first equation. So, solution. There, as you can see, V is equal to GT. We have removed already the VO since, since initial velocity is zero and it's positive because the motion is upward. So 9.8 meter per second squared gravity times one second. So velocity is 9.8 meter per second. Second, the second there is eliminated. So the, the answer is 9.8 meter per second. For letter B, it's 
since the motion of the object is from upward then it goes downwards so the gravity there is negative so velocity is equal to negative 9.8 meter per second squared times 2 seconds so the velocity is equal to negative 19.6 meter per second and the maximum height or the maximum maximum displacement of the ball is equal to from the equation the second equation one half gt squared is the remaining on the right part of the equation because initial initial distance and initial velocity is zero so one half gt squared is the remaining remaining um, expression on the right side so y is equal to one half times 9.8 meter per second squared times two second squared so the the maximum height is 19.6 meters that's the result in, in problem number two next example number three a balloonist riding in the basket of hot air balloon that is rising vertically with a constant velocity of 10 meter per second releases a sandbag when the balloon is above the ground neglecting air resistance what is the bag speed when it hits the ground the given we have initial velocity of 10 meter per second as stated in the problem. We also have height of 40.8 meters and constant acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meter per second squared. And we are to solve for the velocity of the balloon, of the sandbag rather. So which of the following equations we're going to use? We have VO, we have Y, we have G. And we are to solve for v we have number three the third equation for free fall so solution v squared is equal to vo squared minus 2gy substitute the following values for vo squared or initial velocity we have 10 meter per second squared 10 meter per second then squared plus 2 times 9.8 meter per second squared times or 40.8 meters velocity now um, simplifying the equation and calculating it further, the resulting velocity of the sandbag is 13 meter per second. You may check and recalculate using your calculator so you can verify if it is really 30 meter per second. And you also know how did it end up in 30 meter per second velocity. Number four, ball thrown upward. Gina throws a ball upward into the air with an initial velocity of 15 meter per second. Calculate A, how high it goes, and B, how long the ball is in the air before it comes back to her hand. We are not concerned here with the throwing action, but only with the motion of the ball after it leaves the thrower's hand. What are the given and what is required? We have A, given is, of course, the constant G, 9.8 meter per second squared, and the initial velocity of 15 meter per second. And we're to calculate A, Y, the distance, the vertical distance, and B, the time. So which of the following equations we're going to use? The third equation for letter A. Okay, so solution. V is equal to zero at the highest point. Note that as the ball rises, its speed decreases until it reaches the highest point. Where its speed is zero for an instant, then it descends with increasing speed. To determine the maximum height, we calculate the position of the ball when its velocity is equal to zero. So V squared is equal to VO squared minus 2GY. 2GY, we are simplifying the, the equation. We are simplifying this equation from the third here equation and solving for Y, we got this equation. VO squared is equal divided by 
2 times gravity. So this is equal to, since initial velocity is given 15 meter per second, then squared, divided by 2 times 9.8 meter per second squared. So the answer is 11.5 meters. For letter B, we are, we are to solve for the time. We are to solve for the time or how long the ball is in the air before it comes back to Gina's hand. Now we need to calculate how long the ball is in the air before it returns to her hand. We could do this calculation in two parts by first determining the time required for the ball to reach its highest point and then determining the time it takes to fall back down. However, it is simpler to consider the motion from A to B, so to C, or from, from the first step to the last one in one step and use the second equation and not the total distance traveled. Thus, we're going to use this equation y is equal to initial velocity times times minus one half gt squared. So we're going to, since y is zero, Initial velocity is given 15 meter per second times the time minus one half times negative gravity then t squared plus b. So here we factor out the t since both the terms has t. So we factored out t. The remaining is 15 meter per second minus 4, then transposing the uh, the expression, which is transpose this one, or just change, transferred it to the left, then equated that to zero. It's still the same. So 15 meter per second minus 4.90 meter per second squared. There's another t because this is t squared. Then enclose t is equal to zero. We have therefore two solutions. Simplifying this further, this becomes t is the other one t is equal to zero, and the other one is t is equal to 15 meter per second divided by 4.90 meter per second squared, and this equals to 3.06 seconds. The first solution t is equal to zero corresponds to the initial point a when the ball was first thrown and was also at y is equal to zero. The second solution, t is equal to 3.06 seconds, corresponds to point c when the ball has returned to y is equal to zero. Thus, the ball is in the air for 3.06 seconds. Last example, a penny is dropped from the observation deck of the Empire State Building, 369 meters above the ground. With what velocity does it strike the ground? Ignore air resistance. Given we have the 369 meters, which is the vertical distance, gravity, which is constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. Initial y is zero, of course, the initial velocity is also zero. We are to solve for the final velocity. Now, which of the following? We have to use the third equation. Solution, b squared is equal to bo squared minus 2gy, since y is always 0. So b squared is equal to 0 minus 2gy, then substitute the values, we have b squared is equal to negative 2 times the, the, the gravity and the 269 meters. b is equal to this one, and the final velocity is negative 85.04 meter per second. That's the final answer. Thank you. Please click subscribe. I never made it, but I know I